Good morning, everybody. Welcome on this. It's going to be a lovely day, right? Uh, a few announcements this morning. I'll start with Nancy. Do you want to come up and do yours? Ah, mics aren't working. Just realize that. Um, can you pull yours up real quick, or I, only because I have mine taped to me. <laughs> okay, there you go, Nancy. Stand <laughs> here. Yeah. Oh yeah, right up here. This one's set up. Sorry about that. We're still adjusting. <laughs> Good morning. The staff parish committee is. Hang on. It's still not working. It's on. All right, you just gotta get it closer to your face. Eat the mic. Okay. Yeah. The staff parish committee is pleased to announce the addition of Brendan Fox to our future staff. Brendan is currently a ministry intern at Saratoga Springs United Methodist Church, and he's a candidate for deacon's orders. Brendan is getting married next Saturday to Allison Clock, who is an associate pastor at Saratoga UMC. Allison and Brenda, Brendan will live in the pastoral housing provided by Saratoga. Brendan is an outgoing, enthusiastic participant in ministry. He enjoys collaborative worship experiences and providing spiritual care and support to all ages. Recent responsibilities included co-leading confirmation class, and visitation at Wesley as an interfaith chaplain. He has planned and provided church worship services and participates in outreach and music ministries. Brendan appears to be an excellent fit for Burn Hills, and we feel blessed to have found him. He will be sharing an introductory letter with us in the near future. We know you'll all welcome Brendan and his new wife, Allison. Say thank, thank you to Nancy and to the um, SPRC for all the work they've done to find someone to take on that role. And he's, oh, and he starts on September 1st. Yes. Okay. So you. Hopefully you'll get a chance to see him before then, and he'll get introduced to you all and to the fair all within a week. So. <laughs> a couple other quick announcements. Just a reminder that um, we have begun fellowship in Night Hall after the service. I don't know if there's coffee this morning. Um, I don't know if there's anything at 9. Coffee's made. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> so there is coffee after service if anybody wants to go down to Night Hall. Um, we have a lot, that is being allowed now by the reopening team. It is available, but we still need people to sign up to be the host. So if you're interested in that, I believe there's a sign-up list in the office. You contact our new secretary who started this week, Anne. Um, Cindy left us on, the sec on Tuesday for her new job, um, and we had somebody new start on Wednesday. So if you get a chance to stop in and wave at Anne, uh, you may want to give her a little time to get used to things before you look for deep conversation. <laughs> Um, but she is here and has started. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention this morning, uh, outreach, youth, and Mother's Day are all the same week this year. So coming up on May, plus we've got baptism that day. So May 8th is going to be a busy day here at Burnt Hills. Um, but just so you're aware of that. At 1030 only. At 1030 only. Okay. So 9 o'clock will be nice and simple. Thank you. I'm a little flustered this morning. No 9 o'clock service that day. So there will only be the one service at 10.30. You're all invited to that, and it'll be a busy day. And we need to add that to the... Oh, it is right there. I looked right over it. With all that out of the way, let us prepare for worship on this beautiful day.
Please rise as you're able and join me in the call to worship this morning. On this second Sunday of Easter, the light of God's love shines again. The light of Christ shines brightly and overcomes all challenges. Nothing can defeat God's love for us. As the disciples face challenges to sharing the power of resurrection, so we will face challenges when we seek to bear witness to that love. They were witnesses to God's power over death. May we continue to witness to God's power and grace. Let us share the story and the impact of that love on our lives, even when we are bewildered, uncertain, and seeking answers. May our faith and witness show others that the light of Christ continues to defeat darkness in our world. And may this time of worship, reflection, and celebration be a worthy response to God's love and Christ's sacrifice for us. Amen. And let us join our voices now in the opening hymn this morning, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. Please be seated. The first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the stories of the early church in the very first days after the resurrection. 
when the apostles were encountering the authorities. Acts chapter 5. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Amen. In this season of Easter, and in any season, it is always a joy to welcome new members in the fellowship of the church. And so this morning, we welcome Carol Patochny, who is being sponsored and welcomed by Renee Mesh. Please come forward. Friends in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church and incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. We are given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant that was declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's Holy Church. And in that spirit, will you welcome and introduce Carol? Good morning. Carol is a dear friend of mine. Um, she grew up in Glenville, moved to Central Florida for 20 years, and recently moved back to our area. Carol has her master's in pastoral care, was ordained as an elder in the Presbyterian Church is a trained spiritual director and served for many years in her church in Florida as the director of Soul Care Ministries. She has one amazing daughter, wonderful son-in-law, and two sweet little granddaughters who live in Atlanta. Carol loves quilting, traveling, Bible studies, and leading retreats. She's been a member of the Thursday Seekers Group for a, whole, for a while now and is excited to join our warm and loving church family. I hope you'll take time to welcome her over the next few months to get to know her. She's fun and awesome. Thank you, Renee. Now, Carol, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as his representative in the world. And as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? As a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the Burnt Hills United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And I say, remember your baptism and be thankful. Carol, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And friends, our welcome is a congregational act and a congregational reaffirmation. Do you as Christ?
Christ's body reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. And so, members of the household of God, I commend Carol to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Thanks for all that God has given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, we renew our covenant to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We have this for you, Thank you. and a certificate for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, may the God of wonder and mercy who calls us to eternal glory through Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Welcome her, everybody, please. Thank you. Thank you both. Good morning, all. That's this last verse from this piece we're going to do. And so through all the length of days, your goodness fails me never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. Lord, let us remember that it's not about us, but it's all about you. Can our gifts of music and song be pleasing to you in our praise and worship?
of days, your goodness fills me never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house Thank you to Shelby and Harms for sharing with us. Let us take a moment. A gospel reading is next from the book of John. I'm going to read from the 20th chapter, 19th through the 29th verses. And this is a story about doubting Thomas. But it's also a story about witness. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said that, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said that, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We give thanks for these words from Scripture. And now I invite you to join, to rise as you're able, and join in singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
city. Let us take a moment in prayer. Holy God, we pray that we are able to bear witness to your love to the world. As we gather today, may our hearts be open to hearing from your scripture, to worshiping you, and to going out into the world refilled with your spirit. Amen. So what I've got written down is it's been a great day so far. A few glitches, but it has been a good day because we've celebrated and welcomed a new member to the congregation. And in that process, we once again all committed to renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. You do realize you all did that this morning, right? Sometimes we recite these things and we may not think about them. But that is a serious commitment and one that we all should be striving to live into to the best of our abilities. And it's worthwhile to consider just what it is we are saying when we repeat that. I could actually do a whole sermon series looking at each of those five things that we agree to do individually, considering just what it meant, what is meant by our prayers, our presence, gifts, service, and witness. But I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But today, the lectionary actually gave us two readings that look at that concept of witness and to faith. So I want to talk about that today. In the gospel story, Jesus has been crucified and laid in the tomb, the empty tomb found three days later by Mary Magdalene. That's who John says found it. Peter's with her. But as he and the other young man that's with them go into the tomb, the angels come to Mary and explain to her that Jesus has risen. And then Jesus himself appears to her. And then Mary shared that encounter with the disciples, and she told them what had happened. And now they're all gathered in a room, locked away, fearful that they may meet a fate similar to his. Even though Mary has just shared her story with them. She has just witnessed to them that Jesus is risen and I've seen him in person. And they are still fearful. But then Jesus appears to them and they rejoice. Now they believe her. Yet they continue to meet in that locked room, and we know that a week later they are still there. And we wonder why Thomas doubted their witness about that encounter. They've heard Mary's witness. They've witnessed Jesus themselves, and still they live in fear. They lock themselves away. And yet Jesus appears amongst them again, even as their witness is mixed as they say one thing and yet they act a different way. They're sharing that story that Jesus showed up, that he appeared before them, that they know what they're supposed to do and yet they're still fearful. I can understand that. As humans, we're always balancing our faiths and our fears. But in Acts, we see a very different form of witness. Jesus' followers by then, identified as the apostles, had just been jailed the previous day. And that's not part of what I read you, but if you go back and look at the section before that, the previous day they had been preaching about Jesus. And then they had been arrested and put in jail. And then that night an angel came and set them free. And when the passage picks up, what I started reading today It is now the next day, and after being freed, they had gone into the temple and once again began preaching about Jesus. 
and then they get arrested and brought before the authorities or the council or the Sanhedrin, get brought before them again, where they are chastised and threatened again. And yet, unlike when they were in that room, Peter and the apostles make it clear that their faith calls them to speak God's truth and bear witness to Jesus' life and his death and the resurrection, regardless of what might happen to them. In the time between the Thomas story and the story in Acts, I won't say they've lost their fear, but they've come to understand that they need to act in spite of their fear. Regardless of what's going to happen to them, they need to stand up in public and share their witness. And that kind of witness in the face of threats, in the face of persecution and danger to their own well-being, is a huge shift from the way they act in that room with Thomas. That kind of witness actually became widespread in the early church as Christians shared in voice and in actions the story of Christ with whoever asked them about it. They shared the power of God's love, even a power over death. And yet they knew that they would probably be persecuted for their actions and their faith. That's the kind of faith that Hollywood likes to make movies about. When one puts themselves in danger to share their witness. For all the claims of many churches today and for all the money spent on advertising, on TV shows and elaborate buildings and even whole television networks, that kind of witness that stands up to earthly powers, even when such a stance puts one's life at risk, not just people are going to laugh at you, but your life may really be at risk as those early Christians were. That seems to have become the exception rather than the rule. And yet we still can and we do use our witness to support the ministries of the church, just like we promised again this morning, and to bear witness to our faith and our trust in Christ in many other ways. We bear witness with our voices, verbally or in writing. We bear witness with our actions. Do we do things, like this church does so many, where we seek to be God's hands helping the community? But there are other ways to be in action to speak about your faith. And I'm going to ask a question. I don't know if anybody's going to respond. But I wonder what any of you might see as ways that you share your witness that might be a little different. Okay. Look, Nancy, were you going to? Through the bicycles we give to the refugees, something we do. And that's something not every church does. Well, I'm not going to push it. I just ask you to think about that. How do you bear witness to your faith? And are you doing something that makes you uncomfortable? Because I know most of us are uncomfortable with that idea of active witnessing and evangelism. Those are two of those words that we don't hear a lot in many churches because people don't want to think about them. Uh, That idea of going and speaking to someone else about your faith is something that we tend to avoid actively doing, unlike some church, like the Mormon church, every young person has to go out and missionize. And in the Seventh-day Adventist church or the Jehovah's Witnesses, they go door to door and knock, and none of us want to be seen as that person. But that doesn't mean that we can't share about our faith. We can share in ways that are not scary or threatening or an annoyance to others. The most important thing about doing that is simply to be ready to share your witness when an opportunity arises. For example, 
when we choose to somehow be visible to the world as a follower of Christ, when we do something that lets people outside of this building see our faith for some reason. Um, and that could be working at a feeding program, it could be working with the bikes for the refugees, it could be LAF, where we're actually out in the community, but how often when we're at LAF do we talk about our faith? We tend to focus on giving people a good deal, but do we explain to them why we do it? Or there are other activities that you may take part in that encourages someone else to even ask the question, why are you doing that? You know, I, I don't understand why you do these things. And when they ask that question, be ready to say, it's because of my faith, because this is what I think Jesus tells us to do. One of my favorite books is this little one that I was going to hold up, but I left it in my office. Um, and it looks at the issue of being a witness for our faith in that way. It's a book written by, uh, the author's name is Brian McLaren, and it's called More Ready Than You Realize, colon, The Power of Everyday Conversations. And that book looks at these very questions of how we can share our faith in ways that are non-threatening. In fact, in ways that other people are actually starting the conversation sometimes. And it's all about how we respond, how we choose to respond. And on the back cover of that book is this funny little summary. And it's, I'm not going to give you the whole thing because it goes on a little bit too long. But it starts off and says, Warning! This is not just another book on evangelism. It's the simple idea of evangelism through friendship first and the opportunities to share your faith that follow. And then it goes on for some more. And then the next line says, out. Evangelism as a sales pitch, as a conquest, as warfare or as an ultimatum or threat or something you have to do. In disciple-making conversations as friendship, as invitation, as companionship, as challenge, as an opportunity, as a dance, as something that you get to do. I think it's a great book, and I haven't shared it widely here yet, and now I won't get the chance to. Um, but I do encourage anybody to take a look at it. I have two copies if somebody wants to borrow one. Um, it is a great little book about how we can more actively be a witness to our faith and then living into the everyday opportunities that we have to witness to Christ's love in more ways than most of us even realize. So I encourage you to, to think about those things. May we all bear witness to the love that can change lives. And may we always remember that when we promise to live into our faith by witness and all that other stuff. Amen. One of the ways that we also promise is with our gifts. And it says presence, that's with a C-E at the end, not presents, like you give on holidays. Um, but with all that in mind, let us take a few moments to hear Pete play Sacred Road, which is an original, I understand. No, the, the, you wrote the words, okay. Pete's words are original, the music is borrowed. As the ushers come forward, to take up today's offering. And in addition to our singers once again, Diane will also be signing this for us.
With each morning comes a new sunrise, new beginning for each life below. From the sun's bright eye comes the love we need, traveling down this sacred road. A lone bird flies towards the clouds above, as if circling to infinity, as each one must make the truth. Loving God, we give you thanks for all that you provide us. We give you thanks for the community that we share and the roofs over our head. We know we are blessed. We ask your blessing today upon these gifts that are given to continue your work in this place. 
to continue in ministry and in sharing our witness to your love. May the, not only these gifts, but each person who is given today and each person who witnesses for you in whatever way, with their hands or their heart, their voices, their feet, may your blessing fall upon each of us. Amen. Please be seated. As we come together this morning, we have friends who are in need of prayer, and I want to share their names with you now as we begin. Phyllis Haltower has asked for prayers for her friend Dave, who's dealing with several serious health issues. And Jill Locks has asked for prayers for her mom, Sally, and her family, as mom is now in the hospital dealing with some heart issues and the family is looking at decisions about long-term care for her. Diane Stahl reached out to us this week and asked for prayers for her and for her husband, Jim, who is in Albany Med. He had to go in and apparently has a rare brain concern. And she asked prayers for Jim and the family in the days ahead. Nancy Bianco has asked for prayers for her son-in-law, George, as he has a medical procedure in the coming week. And Glenda Hughes has asked for prayers for her nephew, who's facing a troublesome diagnosis. She asked prayers for quick and effective treatment. We heard just this morning from Nancy Down that her brother-in-law, Dick, and his family are in need of prayers as Dick has passed away. And we continue to want to pray for Dick Chatterton, who is now home but continues to recover from his recent fall. For Betty Speck and Janet Groudens, also home from their time in the hospital but with ongoing recovery concerns. For Pat Ewart and Al Predmore, who are still at Kingsway, prayers for both of them and their families. And again, we ask for Bill and Joyce Poley as Bill continues with some health challenges. We have many friends who are still unable to be with us because of their living situations, and we lift up the names of June Parch and Jane Coffey and Carol Carver, who are all at Glendale, and for so many others who, for whatever reasons in their life, are unable to come and spend their time with us in worship. And Jan Smith reminds us to continue with prayers for Michaela, who is now home and doing better, but still dealing with health issues. As we hear the prayer song, we can lift up those names and the ones that we hold in our hearts, but we also have a prayer blanket this morning. Pete Van Curen has asked for this blanket. Actually, Jan Black's mother, Norma, um, for prayers of comfort and healing. And I don't think we're ready to have folks come forward yet, but I will raise the blanket and you may pray towards it as if we pray over it. Okay. Let us pray.
Once again, for all that we have, for the joy in our life, for the friends and family that we share it with, and we give you thanks for Jesus, for his birth that we celebrate at Christmas, for his sacrifice and death which we mourn on that Friday, and for his resurrection into new life that we celebrate with Easter. Help us to always keep that gift in our hearts and at the forefront of our minds as we seek how to interact with others. Lord, in a world where witness is sometimes laughed at and other times given not easily. May your spirit fill us and guide us in ways to share your love wherever we go. In a world where sickness has been so prevalent for so long, we give thanks that we are able to move forward as a society. We give thanks for your strength that has carried us through. And we give thanks that you will be with us as we go forward, praying that things do not need to lock down again, but recognizing that this pandemic is still not over, that cases are rising. Keep us strong, Lord. We give thanks for all those who have reached out to help our neighbors in Ukraine as they struggle through these difficult days. Signs of your love being shared over and over again as folks have opened their homes, opened their purses. Give what they can. We ask not only that you be with each of these folks, but we pray for those leaders who have the ability to end this senseless violence. May your spirit touch their hearts and lead them to change their actions. And Lord, as we continue through this Easter season, we look to you Not only do we give thanks, but we rejoice and we seek to worship so that you may know that we continue to be your people, followers of your Son and all that he taught us, including those simple words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to rise as you're able and join in our closing hymn at the font we start our journey.
Gracious, me, gracious and loving God, may we go out into this world to share our story, a story that is really yours. May we be storytellers for you, and may we go knowing that you are there before us, that Christ has prepared the way, and that the Holy Spirit goes along with us each and every day. Amen.